not recording. So uh, despite pushing two buttons, I didn't push the third. Much like when I go to a grocery store these days, you know, you slide the card, you put in what you want to do, it's just okay, fine. And then I think about something else, but it's asking me if I want cash, and I always mess up on that one. It's uh, just who I am. So uh, and I got it done before uh, 10 minutes, which uh, called for a good job from Jim. Okay. So time for me to uh, go into uh, our option, margin and strategy selection. The reason I'm doing this today is it's a continuing problem for myself. And uh, on multiple levels. One, margin. I never have the same margin across comp uh, uh, platforms. I trade three different platforms. Plus, I have uh, Option View. One thing that's wonderful about Option View, and I'll show you this later, is, and I could show you, I'll actually show it to you right now, is when I cal look at a position, okay, and I look here, down in this corner right here, the lower left-hand corner where it says summary, this is the gross margin requirement. This is the net margin requirement. Okay, the, this is the number that's the basic guideline from the SEC and from FINRA. This is a very important number to know. You can trust it. It, it, it is one of the most solid numbers that you have. And trust me, we all assume that our brokers don't make mistakes. This is a mistake where everybody either makes a mistake and, and wants to hear about it and can change it, or they really don't care. It's an acid test for customer service, okay? So this is why it's important that you under, we understand the basics of margin. You will, margining, you will not understand it real well, the by the time we leave, unless you understand it now. And it's something that I've managed to learn, and it makes a difference. I'm constantly checking my margin. And uh, so without further ado, I'm going to move forward. And uh, now I have to find my PowerPoint. Okay. There we go. So this is a picture of me. You notice there's two different ones. Uh, this is a younger me in airbrush more than a penthouse fold-out. But uh, I came down to the options exchange, geez, nearly 30 years ago, okay, and I traded in a number of pits. I was a floor trader. I was an independent trader. I was backed by somebody, but I basically went into the crowd with a calculator, trading cards, and uh, uh, position cards, and uh, I, I – traded off of our reversals and conversions. We didn't have theoreticals. We didn't know what our gamma was, our vega was. Uh, I'm pretty good at looking at uh, a large and complex position and telling you what the delta is. I'm actually pretty darn good. So I've been doing this for a while and uh, accumulated a fair amount of wisdom, basically uh, in the ways I've lost money. Okay. Favorite saying of my dad was, uh, chance uh, favors only the prepared mind. And that's a saying by Louis Pasteur. Uh, somebody just asked me to, uh, and we'll go on, can we make Option View uh, sync with another broker's um, portfolio margin? No. We can't. We can't make anybody sync with portfolio margin. Everybody calculates portfolio margin different. In fact, with the person I asked about, we can't even sync with the Reg T margin. And I'll go into this a little more. I just said two words that are sort of the core of what we're going to talk about. Okay. This is a hypothetical performance disclaimer. In other words, anything I say or any example I use is purely for teaching reasons. It's so that to elucidate something so you can learn something better, okay, and understand something better. Now, 
just because I use something as an example, please don't go out and do the trade. Because the main reason I probably remember the trade is because I lost money on it. Okay? So, you know, just because I write it down, uh, the uh, it, it doesn't mean it's uh, the, the strategy is good. I didn't want to say it's not true. Okay. This is a, a saying I got from Donald Rumsfeld, and it's, you know, he and uh, Yogi Berra, a famous baseball player, uh, have become my uh, my trading mentors lately uh, because uh, what they say makes as much sense as any of the talking heads on TV or in the Wall Street Journal or Barron's. But Donald Rumsfeld said, said there's knowns, known knowns. There are things that we know. There are known unknowns. That is to say there are things we now know we don't know. But there are also unknown unknowns. There are things we do not know we don't know. Well, basically, I'm going to talk about known knowns and how it can impact our trading. And margin's one of them. Uh, somebody just said, uh, find the official Reg T margin notes. No, because people don't have to follow it. Okay? So here's some basic facts about trading and trading with margin. All option strategies work. And each of those strategies describes a specific set of expected outcomes. And that's over price action, implied volatility, and time. <clears throat> Excuse me. So understand, we look at all strategies from that standpoint. And no strategy works all the time. Well, there's a fourth thing that really makes a difference, and that's margin requirements. And they really impact the utility of a strategy, the viability of the strategy, because they affect the rate of return, okay? And so options margin are guidelines developed by the SEC and FINRA. And uh, they change at times. I mean, just last, gosh, October, they changed the Reg T requirements for a broken wing butterfly. Actually, any unbalanced strategy, whether it's a butterfly, an iron condor, an iron uh, butterfly, they changed it. Historically, they had added two sides together and subtracted the credit, and that's how they came up with it. Now, they just look at the biggest side and subtract the credit. Basically, a butterfly and an iron butterfly have the same risk, the same graph. But prior to this, an iron butterfly quite often had twice the margin requirements of a butterfly and therefore half the rate of return. These are important things for us to know, okay? And so what did margin in an equity and index options trading account is the amount of cash deposit needed in the account when you write options. If you sell a call, if you sell a put, if you sell anything, okay? And that dollar amount is required by the broker so that they can ensure that the option writer, whoever that may be, has the ability to fulfill the obligations of the contract sold. Now understand, that's fulfill the obligations of the contract sold to the broker. The OCC, the Options Clearing Corporation, well, is who guarantees that we will receive whatever benefits, obligations associated with buying or selling an option. They take care of that. Uh, what happens when uh, a company makes mistakes doing that, they'll go uh, belly up quite often. Uh, we've seen that a couple times in the futures business over the past three or four years. We have seen it, uh, gosh, Lehman Brothers. This is, <coughs> I think we're fast approaching the fifth year of uh, the fifth anniversary. So <coughs> the concept behind that is writers of options are exposed to unlimited risk. And you and I both know that it's not necessarily unlimited. I mean, if you sell a put, 
you know, the stock's not going to go to negative, so it stopped off there. And I can't remember the last time I've seen a stock go to infinity, probably Berkshire, but I'll tell you, it's leveraged, it can move quickly. And uh, part of what margin does is it, it, it encourages the writers of options to uh, spread. So if you buy an option, okay, if you know from the writer of the option, your buying power is reduced by the amount of the purchase. So you know, I buy something for a dollar, and I have ten dollars buying power. My resulting buying power after buying one of those is nine dollars. However, if I sell one of them, I might not be able to do any more trading. Now. I'm going to emphasize this about 20 times throughout this, but it is imperative you understand how your broker handles margining. And there's two types of margin. There's Reg T, and quite frankly, I don't know what Reg T stands for, and I've only been saying the word for 30 years now, which is a strategy-based margin calculation. And... Uh, a single call or a single put, buying or selling one, is considered a strategy in this concept. Then there's portfolio margin, and uh, th that's the other form. We can't check. Somebody asked me, can you compute what somebody's portfolio margin is? No. Uh, I. The question asked of me was uh, about somebody's portfolio margin. And uh, I talked. I was having problems with them on their portfolio margin and their Reg T margin. I won't say the firm, but when I was asking them how I could be sure that all of a sudden I wouldn't end up in a margin problem if they could send me their guidelines, the response was, "Well, Mr. Fahey, our margining formulas are proprietary." And it was like, "Okay, come on. How am I supposed to define the risk?" Well, you'll just have to see what it is after you put it on. And uh, I'll have a couple other stories about this firm. But it's very important that we understand this whole concept of margin. And it's not that hard. And, so, and most of us will be reg T. Some are portfolio margined, which reduces the responsibility of, gosh, really sort of knowing what the margining is. But... The good thing is, well, not the good thing is, it, 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 it will double, triple. I've even seen in certain situations quintuple the, amount, the size of the positions you can put on. Well, one thing I like about Option View and uh, their uh, that little left, notice here in the left-hand corner is it tells me what the risk is. So I, I have a standard parameter because if all of a sudden my 20,000 will let me put on the 50 lot spreads, I need to know that because I'll tell you what, I'll be able to lose money a whole lot quicker. So it, there's a certain sensitivity to uh, leverage that one has to have when trading options and based on the uh, the, the margin that we use. Okay. Uh, good. Let's see. I am going back to. It's always a challenge for me to do this. Okay. And so, margining of Reg T or the portfolio margin will define the capital required for a strategy. As you saw before, the that last one required 20,000 capital with standard Reg T requirement with published Reg T requirement as published by the CBOE or um, the ISE, New York Stock Exchange, the OCC, FINRA, and the SEC. And it's the basis of re, uh, determining the return on investment because if it, you know, if a, a strategy costs me 20000 bucks and I get 4000 on it, I have a 20% rate of return. And that's a, not annualized. It's just an immediate rate of return. But if the same strategy costs me twice as much 
and I made 4,000, I'd only make uh, five, oh, 10 percent. Excuse me. So yeah, I mean, but at times I've seen it where one strategy I may make it eight or nine percent. It would be the expected when things are going well on a reg T, but if they don't calculate it right, all of a sudden it's a 3% rate of return or 2% rate of return. And when that happens, quite frankly, it's not worth doing. The risk reward is not palpable, uh, you know, palatable. It, it, it's, I'm, I'm just unwilling to do it because the, the potential for losing money far ex exceeds the, uh, the potential for uh, making money. So here, let's. Why is option margin important? And knowing option margin important, okay? A lack of understanding will cost you money, and that's not only understanding what the basic guidelines are, but you've got to know what your own broker does. And I would suggest getting it in writing if you can. Okay. It, it, it helps me determine how much cash I'm going to allocate to each strategy or each trade when I'm doing, you know, trading multiple underlyings with multiple strategies. You know, I may have a ironed uh, a cash sweep iron condor on uh, the NDX. I may have um, broken wing butterflies in the S. Uh, SPX and the uh, RUT, I may have a ratio right and the spider. I mean, there, there's a number of different things, and I need to know how it's calculated. And, and so I, I use that margin basis, like I said before, 20000 or 40000 That determines my rate of return, what I get. But one thing that's, oh, gosh, you need to know is they do it differently. And it's not like you put it on and they calculate it and they say, okay, it's 20000 Okay? They calculate, different firms calculate it differently at the point you enter a trade, at the point you adjust a trade, and after adjustment. Okay? Here's an example. A firm that won't be named because I don't know if they'd sue me or not. But these are the type of questions you need to ask. I had a hundred lot spread on. Okay, it was an iron condor. I'm short of vertical, uh, call vertical. I'm short of put vertical. The stock has moved to the upside, so I want to buy a call, a call vertical and sell a higher one. Now, on an iron condor, they look at the uh, the, the the wings. And they say, okay, fine, uh, it's 20 points, let's say it's 20 points wide on each side. They want it to be balanced. And they will start as your gross requirement will be $20 instead of $40. The reason being that you can't lose money on both sides. Okay, so th what they do is they calculate what the, the, that, that vertical is, that $20, and then they subtract the credit for the call and the credit for the put from the $20, okay? If they did it as two separate verticals, you, your margin would literally be twice as much. I had a, a situation where I was using about 70% of my capital in my biggest position, so I have 100 lot. SPX, I put in an order for a condor, which means I'm closing off that first vertical and putting on a second one. I get a partial fill of one. It cancels my order. I get a partial fill of one out of 100. I immediately go into a margin call with a $50,000 X uh, drawdown. I, I call up the firm. I go, what is happening? And they said, well, when you were filled on the one lot, it broke the um, the spread. I said, what do you mean it broke the spread? I have 99 of these iron condors, and I have another iron condors not the same. And they said, well, the, uh, we won't be able to recognize that until the morning when it goes through the overnight calculations. And I said, you're kidding me. They were going to start liquidating one of my customers because of this. I had never heard of such a thing in my life. Their mistake. They say, well, we're all computerized. We can't fix it. 
I had to call up a, a friend. Uh, luckily, I grew up in the area, you know, the Midwest, and I was in the business for a long time, a security lawyer, who called them up and said, if you do liquidate, we're going to sue. But there are firms that you need to know how they do this, and these are questions that you should ask, even if you ask them inelegantly. Please ask them, okay, and you'll get smarter. But if they, I mean, you have the right to talk to the margin department of anybody, any brokerage firm. And if you can't, if they can't correct a mistake during the day, I strongly suggest you find another broker. Okay? Okay? And I said here, you know, and, and, and here's the other thing. Every broker makes margin mistakes. Now, you can't tell on portfolio margin, and I'll explain why, because it's a, it's a stress test. And I don't really know how they apply it. There's a basic standard stress test, but there's nothing that says they can't make it more rigorous. Reg T is Reg T, okay? And when people say, well, no, we don't look at it this way, what they're telling you is, no, we don't have the time or the interest or an attitude about customer service that would – make us want to change it but you gotta that is the question ask them if they will change a margining mistake midday because it quite frankly could keep you from trading the rest of the day and you're going to spend the rest of the day with a uh, a recalcitrant or stubborn uh, customer service department uh, does anybody have any questions uh, somebody said yeah truth is the absolute defense to uh, libel or slander suit. That's true, but in the United States, uh, a tactic of big companies, I won't say the names, because uh, is to uh, attack, you know, whether it, especially when the environment's concerned, they will sue individuals for libel or slander. And all of a sudden, it, it you know, you're no longer an activist. It's sort of, you're done at that point. But, uh, so somebody said, uh, somebody asked, in place of 100 or 10,000 cash, can we use 10,000 stocks that count as margin for an iron condor? I believe you can. It, uh, generally, that's the decision of the broker, but what they want to do is they want to know that those, uh, the assets that you place as margin are liquid, okay? <clears throat> so somebody asked me a question. That was my response there. But uh, so somebody asked me where to find um, official uh, Reg T requirements or margin requirements. I'll go over that. So does anybody have any questions as I'm moving along? Okay. For those of you that are in Chicago, tomorrow night I'm teaching a beginning um, options course, three-hour beginning option course in Schaumburg on behalf of the CBOE and the Options Industry Council. And on Wednesday I am teaching the advanced strategy course. Uh, there's still room available. We're going to have, I think we're up to almost 150 each night. We can hold 200, and it's going to be frank on parade for three hours. I, I think I'll be hoarse by Tuesday night, or Wednesday night. Okay. Okay. Inf somebody asked information on uh, margins. We have the options view system calculation. That is a great, great uh, number. Okay. Or not, not number, but uh, tool. That number is always right. So if I and, and I'll, I'll I'll say good things about somebody, think or swim right now. Well, I should say before I mentioned that they had changed the rules for unbalanced uh, spreads, so that you could add the both sides the the negative look at the upside and the downside and sort of combine them together. Now. They 
are now part of Ameritrade. Before they were with Ameritrade, they had a great software program that calculated your maximum loss on any strategy. It worked every single time. That's what their margin was. Hey, whatever your biggest loss is, that's what we want you to do for the Reg T. And that's how Reg T was calculated. TD Ameritrade wanted them to take over it. Well, right now, it's such a major job to rewrite it that they're making mistakes on the broken wing butterflies. But if I call them up, they fix it immediately. And if I've called them up, they check it at the next day. The customer service is amazing there. And if you use Thinkorswim, call their Chicago 800 number. Do not call their Omaha 8 number and uh, 800 number. So uh, somebody asked me, do I have a personal guideline as to what percentage of your account you will have invested in option trades at one time? I'm an options trader. I'm not an investor. I will allocate a X amount of dollar amount to option trading. I do not allocate in a Reg T account more than 70% of the total dollar amount. So if I have 100000 in the account, I will not have Reg T margin greater than 70%. Quite often it's at 60 because I may see other trades I want to do. And since I am an option seller, I have an exposure to Vega, and I've seen it, my account move 15 to 20% in a short period of time just due to an explosion of volatility. Okay. So uh, another place, every broker website you can will have something on margins and how they calculate it, okay? And uh, make sure you read it. Make sure you print it out. If you have questions, call their margin office. There's people there to, uh, to answer those questions. And they ha basically there's something called compliance. That means they're following the rules. They are supposed to explain it to you, and that's part of their compliance. Okay? I ask for a printed copy of the margin requirements. Usually what they'll do is send me, send me via email the, uh, a link to where I can print out what their different margin requirements. Uh, trading platforms quite often calculate uh, – before you put in a trade, they'll say you're using this much margin. Of course, I've noticed that 95% of the time when somebody tells me that's what the margin is, it truly isn't the margin. Or they're just giving me the gross requirements, not the net requirements, which are the, the, the width, uh, raw width of the spread minus the credits that I've received. There is a PDF on the CBOE website cboe.com and if and it's a margin manual it's a 41 page pdf it does a good job of explaining how it works okay if you look there i've noticed that there's ib interactive brokers has something that talks about margin pages that talk about margin but it doesn't really tell you how it's calculated or what the impact is. TradeStation, on the other hand, has something that's really nice, explaining how they do it, how they look at it. Um, th there's lots of them there. The CBOE has a margin calculator, which is what is part of the uh, option view system that calculates margin. It's very nice. As I mentioned, there's broker web pages, there's the Option Industry Council, there's the OCC, the Options Clearing Corporation, and quite frankly, Google's your friend. Anytime you have a question, Google it. Uh, I, as I've been preparing for this, I Googled Option Margins, and then I did Option Margins CBOE, Options Margin, you know, Trade Station, Trade Monster, Options House. Everybody has it. And most of your questions that you need to have answered are available there, uh, at least enough to point you in the right direction. So my slides were out of order. Uh, I'll talk about Reg T right now. Reg T is the most common form. That's what 95% of us trade. There's no 
Well, there is a uh, somewhat of a requirement. It's basically, it, if you don't have 25000 in the account, in the U.S., you run the, uh, the, the risk of becoming a pattern day trader, which is a pain in the butt. So we're only supposed to trade open and close three positions every five days, something like that. So it makes it difficult if you have less than 25. So strategy-based margin rules have been applied to list, listed options for, gosh, 30 years. They were there when I came down. Now, I, when I went to the floor, I had market maker margin, broker-dealer margin, okay, which is talk about leverage. It's astounding. And they have set formulas for different strategies. And, and interestingly enough, Reg T strategies calculated a bit differently for equity options and index options. If you have a great desire to find that out, uh, you know, the explanation, I will send it to you. All you have to do is send a email to frank at discoveroptions.com. Okay? And here's an example of the strategies available for Reg T uh, strategy based margin. Now, Understand that each of these is for puts and calls or long and short. So a single would be long a call, long a put, short a call, short a put. Protective puts, covered calls, synthetic shorts, synthetic longs. Risk reversal is, if you go through here, I'm, I'm not going to read every single one. But they have guidelines for calculating the margin here. Now, most of us <coughs> trade the same strategies and the same basic underlyings or same type stocks all the time. If you are a collar person, you will it'll take you about a week to to get the ins and outs at maximum to understand the rules and the margining for trading a collar, how it's calculated. I, I mean and in fact I can't imagine it would be because the only person that couldn't would be somebody with a room temperature IQ that's not paying attention, okay? So, I, I mean, these are basically all those different things that are available to you. In addition, these are the same strategies that you will find available to you on the complex order book or COB, which is something that the NASDAQ, the Philly, no, I take that back. The ICE, ISE, the Philex, and the um, CBOE have. So I can actually place orders for, you know, covered calls, things like that. And it'll be placed in a book, and I will have some sort of standing so that I'm not traded through. But this is very important to know. Now, portfolio margin. It's only been around about seven years. It approximates what broker-dealer margin was uh, many years earlier. And that broker-dealer is what I was as a floor trader. It's portfolio-based, not strategy-based. And it looks like at all the positions that are similar. So if you have sector-based, uh, you know, if you're trading sector-based gold mines and GLD and physical gold, it may clump those together. That's where, an, uh, where actually some of the proprietary uh, risk management may come from. Okay, it's based on the risk of the total portfolio. In other words, everything in your account. So, in root, uh, the question when somebody said, "Can you put use ten thousand dollars cash?" Or uh, stock? Yeah, you can. Okay. So what they do is they run a stress test stimu simulating, not stimulating, market moves of up and down, plus or minus 15%. And I, I'll get a report from uh, one, uh, you know some of the places where I have portfolio margin. I'll say this is what you look like, minus 15, minus 10, plus 10, plus 15 percent. Okay, now they clump some of these things together because, uh, you know, if you own Telemex and the uh, the Mexican oil company, you, 
you would cover, you know, probably 60% of an ETF. You know, there's a question how well things track each other. <laughs> so they'll balance that, and, and the companies will do that. And so after they do the stress test, they'll see where the dollar amount, the margin is the highest, and that's what they give you as your margin. So <laughs> quite often, many of the things we trade are pretty benign down 15 or 20%. And that's how you can get down uh, up uh, to five times reg T. And when I say benign, down 15% is nothing compared because my maximum losses are, and the curve doesn't start speeding up until I get to, you know, down 30, down 35%. So it, it, it's interesting. Okay, and, and when I say correlated products, you know, if you're long the SPX and short the spider, they'll balance these. Okay, they'll do some beta weighting that, that, that takes this into account. The same for the Russell and the IWM. So most of the accounts, well, the, the basic rule for portfolio margin, the FINRA slash SEC guideline is that you have at least $100,000. Um, gosh, there's one firm that only wants 101000 bucks, but part of the problem is if you go under 100000 then if you have big positions, you have to liquidate some. So uh, most of them want 110 to 125 Understand that you can magnify your risk, really leverage your risk, and it's something that I wouldn't recommend to anybody and to anyone other than a more seasoned trader, okay? And as I said here, generally greater margin than Reg T or strategy-based margin. Um, it's uh, it, it's pretty amazing. So, what's the re do, any questions as I've gone along? I I'm sort of whipping right through this, and. Um, if you have any questions, as always, it's Frank at discoveroptions.com. I feel like Reverend Ike, uh, P.O. Box 10101, New York, New York. So, yes, send me the, your cards and dollars. No, but I'll answer any questions that y you might have because I, I go through this pretty quickly. I've been known to contradict myself because my mind is moving faster than my mouth, which is uh, pretty cool crazy considering how fast I can talk. So once again, I'm going to go through the rules, and there's really no shortcuts here. But know the Reg T guidelines for the strategies you trade. Okay, and, and pick one. If you pick two, pick, you know, and I would suggest that you learn them for a, the credit, the opposite side of it too. Okay, but know them. And they're available online, you know, the, the CBOE margin handbook. And that's a good starting point because it has the basic FINRA SEC rules for margin. And also make sure you have whatever your firm puts out. But remember, if you uh, margin for something you buy is what you paid for it, okay? If you sell something, then it becomes a little more difficult. But basically, it comes down to whatever the margin approaches, and this is Reg T, whatever your maximum loss is. Make sure the broker sends the guidelines to you or points you in the direction where they are and so you can print them out. I've had to quote these to them before. Ask them, okay, uh, if there is a mistake in margining, if they can fix it during the day. You don't want to wait until the next day for them to fix your mistake. It can keep you from adjusting a position. You know, putting on, not being able to put on a new position is, quite frankly, the least of our problems. You know, I've never gone broke not being able to put on a position. But there are times where I could have gone broke if I hadn't been able to adjust a position, to fix a position, to exit a position. I mean, come on, a hundred lot condor, I'm trying to close it, and I broke it with a one lot? Seriously. And they wouldn't let me 
they wouldn't even put in the order for the other 99 for me. It was something I had to do. That cost me money. Okay? So, and that was Reg T. And I'm going to cough so that people know who it is. <coughs> so, um, but it, it, it's problematic. The, the, the gotcha on this problem with that one company and their inflexibility is that they also give the best portfolio margin of anybody. So it's, you know, between a rock and a hard place there. Okay. A broker can, okay, and I'm going back, can apply more rigorous guidelines than what you would get from calculate it on option view, calculating it with the CBOE margin calculator or whatever. Okay? That's fair. They can have their own levels of risk, but they need to be able to communicate to you. And they need to tell you how it's applied at trade entry, at adjustment entry. That was the problem I ran into. And afterwards, you know, there's another firm out there, and I don't even know if they're around, but I had a student once who was telling me about them, and if he could do the whole spread, they'd let him adjust it, but it would be broken afterwards, but they wouldn't liquidate them until the next day. It was just absurd. So know how these people do it. Most of your big firms, and you know, are, are very, very good about it. I, I, I think the big question that you want to know is, will they fix a mistake during the day? And uh, just because it, it needs to be done. So always check your margin every day, and uh, you'll get pretty good at it. I mean, I can look at an iron condor. I can look at a butterfly. I can look at a vertical. I mean, I, I'm pretty good because, n number one, I know how wide my wings are, okay, the verticals. I know what credit it's trading at, so I'm going – Oh God, I got two seventy point twenty point wings. That's uh, two thousand bucks, and I uh, sold that for uh, three dollars. So my margin's seventeen or, or seventeen hundred. And if I have ten of them, then my margin is seventeen thousand. It's important to know. Okay. Understand that some firms, and I haven't run into it yet because. I don't. I haven't traded leaps until recently. Look at the maturity of the options in the strategy, and uh, I come up with different margin. Actually, interestingly enough, it tends to be lower at times for long-term strategies. It's because if you look at a leap, you'll notice that you go, you know, 40 points in each direction on some of these, and you know it's. The delta is 50 plus or minus 5. So movement in the underlying won't hurt you too much. Okay? But don't be afraid to call a broker and ask for the margin desk. Don't be afraid to call a broker and ask for the trade desk. Don't let any customer service person leave you feeling stupid. Okay, and it's hard when we're newer traders to do that. But I, I, I mean, I made a call, oh, about a month ago about margin, and the, and it was a person who, who really didn't know what they were talking to you about, and they said, "Let me explain to you how options work." And rather than tee off immediately, I, I waited a moment because I. I thought maybe I'd learned something new. And uh, the person merely cemented their uh, their application to the Idiot Hall of Fame but and and actually merited a call from me to uh, a manager. But there was no such thing as a dumb question. You're risking money. Options are risky. And so, I, I mean, don't let these people browbeat you into 
not asking a question. So I, enough of that, you know, on the uh, on the soapbox. But it's really important. Okay, your customers, and you're risking money, and you deserve to be treated with dignity and respect. And I mean, these people get lots of money from us, and they don't even give us a free buffet like they would at the casino. Okay, and so if you don't understand how it's computed or why it's different than uh, how Option View computes it, and that's the beauty of Option View, is you sit there and it won't show you how it computes, but the computations are so simple that you'll go, ah, yeah, I see where that does it. Remember, it's the width minus the credit, you know, what you, the money you bring in. Okay, so if you can see it that way, you know, for the few things you trade, that's good, okay? And they should be able to explain why it's not the way you see it. And don't be afraid to change brokers because of it, okay? And the whole thing is when it comes to uh, selection of a broker, uh, margining is every bit as important, if not more important than commissions. And I would say, the same for customer service. I, I mean, I hate it when I make a mistake or they make a mistake and I'm on hold for 45 minutes. You know, I would rather have somebody that answers the phone and tells me no rather than somebody that, you know, talks around for 45 minutes. So let's see what's next. I had, I think, one more slide here. I have to always balance. I could, have, I could talk about this for hours with examples. This is something, it, margining can be a bit different from company to, company to company. In, as we set up something, the information, if you hit account info, okay, in option view, this comes up, the screen in the back. Here it says security margins. This will figure out the margins for securities and options, okay? And as you go through here, these are numbers that actually some of the companies will answer. Uh, Options House, Trade Monster, Options Express, Thinkorswim, they'll answer this. Okay? And, so, and, and that's good. So uh, that's a way to, uh, to uh, approximate what your broker, uh, broker does. So I don't have a whole lot more. I could talk for hours about this. Uh, am I seeing the market go down here? Uh, actually, I should. I've, I've been watching it. Six screens. Only two are you guys. The others are uh, other folks. So. Um, Let's see, questions. What if you do not want it to assume you will use margin when buying a stock or leap? Change those first four to 100%. This is Jim Graham. First four, security initial margin, security maintenance margin, long-term long -term option maintenance margin, and initial margin. So you change that to 100%. And it'll give you uh, a more accurate picture and analyze when using percentage yield. Okay. So, um, oh, Apple is now down 15. Well, geez. Um, I live. I have two now early 20 boys. And they always. I was, couldn't trade Apple because they always said, oh, I'm not going to buy anything that a 16-year-old girl wants. And I now have realized, thinking back over my life, that I probably should buy anything that a 16-year-old girl wants. Okay? So one thing is the reason that we changed the security initial margin and the long t these numbers here is it will end up doubling your percentage yield. Okay, and uh, will make a trade look too good. Uh, th that's the main reason I, I don't trade leaps, and most of you are in much the same situation as I do, is number one, I like liquid uh, trades. I, I want to be able to, 
um, get in and get out at a reasonably predictable price, preferably the midpoint. Well, the leaps are so far out. In fact, I just noticed today that the uh, Jan 16s appeared. Um, I, I think they may have appeared today because I had a couple things come up or trading where all of a sudden those appeared. I mean, oh, I, it, it's just so d difficult to trade. And right now, part of the problem with leaps is their exposure to interest rate. Uh, most of you, uh, well, all of you are probably contemporaries age-wise, but when I first came down to the floor 30 years ago, broker loan rate was around 15%, and I get 80% of broker loan for short stock, and I had to pay broker loan plus five, half a percent for anything I owned. That was the big expense for me. And, uh, gosh, row was a big number. If they moved interest rates on me, that changed everything. And people, are, I think, have become accustomed to interest rates being basically zero. And uh, when you go out a year or a year and a half, gosh, of 16, I mean, that's two years and three and a half months. So that's 27 and a half months. Anybody want to bet on what the uh, the interest rates are going to be a year and a half from now in uh, a product that trades by appointment, meaning you have to find the person that wants to take the other side? Okay, well, this really has nothing to do with margin, but it has everything to do with margin. Does anybody else have any questions? And as always, really, if you're confused, if you – you know, want to know what to do about mar margins, give me a call. You know, Frank Fahey. No, no, that's another email. Uh, Frank at OptionView.com, Frank at DiscoverOptions.com. I'd use Frank at DiscoverOptions.com. Um, I'm on Skype, so, uh, you know, you can get a hold of me that way. For those of you who are overseas, uh, I can tell you what my Skype is here. Um, my Skype is just F, like in Frank, J is in Joseph, Fahey, F-A-H-E-Y. So feel free to contact me. Okay, well, thank you very much. Uh, oh, here's uh, any questions you may have. Um, please, I can't emphasize enough. Don't say it's too complicated because when margin breaks bad on us, it, it's it's just a miserable feeling. And, and I, I've had multiple talks about margin. One thing that you will find, and before I go, don't hang up yet. Don't touch that radio. Um, most companies are not calculating the broken wing butterflies, correct? And that has ended up being I, broken wing iron butterflies, one of my most successful trades the past three months. In fact, I, I'm doing it almost exclusively. I do other ones, but it's just uh, I'm trading it well. Uh, so they switched the broken wing butterfly last, announced it last October, and switched it January 1st. And uh, it, 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 some firms are ch charging literally twice as much. Only one firm. I have found will not correct it. Um, they just won't. That's the way we do it. Da 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 da. -da. So use your uh, options, uh, option view, and and create a uh, a dummy broken wing butterfly, and a reasonable one. You'll see what the margin is and ask them what the margin is. That's quite often the best way. I would do that on a broken wing butterfly, definitely. Okay? So, somebody, oh, what did they switch the broken wing butterfly to? Here, I'll, somebody can't find that. Um, CBOE margin manual. I'll give you guys a link. Uh, boy, it's amazing. I hit CBOE margin manual. And here it is. Google is your friend. <laughs> there it goes. 
Okay. Yeah, I, uh, CBOE's uh, search functions are not very good. It's amazing. I can't find things that are I know I'm there, but I go to Google and type in, you know, what I was looking for and CBOE. And Google knows the CBOE website better than the CBOE does. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, this was fun, as always. Um, no, don't be afraid to ask a, uh, a stupid question because there is no such thing. Okay. Thanks.